A dog barks when his master is attacked. I would be a coward if I saw that God's truth is attacked and yet would remain silent. John Calvin. Telling a woman that she can't be an elder is a nonsense rule. If they claim to be in the body, we let them have it. Uh, Donald Trump is going to win in 2020 by an absolute landslide. Heretics Christianizing the American dream. I said that you, uh, that, that many LDS folks and I uh, love the same Jesus. Uh, I still believe that. Sawing is a blessing from God to make you rich. Treating Jesus like a lottery ticket. The Lord spoke to my heart. Then very few times I've ever heard God be this articulate with me. And I'm telling you word for word, these words came into my heart. I'm not asking you with me. I'm asking you to brush your hair. Well, do it sharply. That's what God commanded. <laughs> Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Master's Dog False Teacher of the Week, episode 46. I'm your host, Norm, the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. the Evangelical Norm. So I understand uh, and I apologize. Well, I don't apologize. This this podcast is about five days late. Um, I have not been able to upload anything on YouTube since, well, I don't know when it, it started. I was able to upload last Wednesday and Saturday morning, I couldn't upload anything. Sunday, I couldn't upload anything. Monday, I couldn't upload anything. Today, I was able to upload. Uh, so uh, we are. I'm redoing episodes because um, just I I don't know. I just, I just redid. I recorded this episode Saturday morning. wasn't able to upload it. Wanted to do it again. Um, maybe just to finesse it a little bit or explain the fact of why everything is so late. Um, I don't know if someone complained about one of my videos. I never got any kind of email or anything from YouTube explaining that I'd been put on restriction or anything like that. It just would not upload anything. I would go to the upload process. I would start and it would just stop and it would just sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. So could have been any number of things. I don't know that I was actually in YouTube jail, but I may have been. I know that, uh, I express some opinions and I've flown under the radar for a long time um, with say I've said a lot of the same things that other people have said that have gotten them demonetized and uh, kicked off and, and suspended and all kinds of things uh, and have never had an issue. So whether or not I kind of hit that, push that envelope too far or if it was just technical issues, I don't know, but here we go. It is. Tuesday morning, and uh, we're going to get all these podcasts. Actually, it'll be afternoon, <laughs> excuse me, by the time everything drops. So, but we're going to get them in. So, uh, the False Teacher of the Week uh, segment of the Master's Dog podcast came from my old introduction video that had a whole bunch of false teachers in it, 39 to be exact, And uh, but who's counting, right? And uh, somebody asked me, said, you know what, I don't know who all these people are. I thought some might have been solid teachers. Could you break it down each person and and so I decided I would do an episode every week um, describing why these people were false teachers started with Stephen Furtick who was episode one because that was the specific question that she had and then I just went systematically through that introduction video I don't use that anymore I know some people are really glad because it was two and a half minutes long this one is about a minute long the new one that I have going on um, so, but if you want to see all of those false teachers that we started out with, you can go back and watch all the, the first 40, 40 episodes, 39 episodes, or you can just go watch that intro video and uh, we've revamped it and it's, it gives me some, some interesting ability to do new things with the introduction video. So I hope you like the new one, but we are going to get into it. And this week's false teacher of the week is one that is probably going to ruffle some feathers because it, it's con controversial on whether or not he is a false teacher. I will I will stand firm on the fact that I do believe that Rick Warren is a false teacher, and I'll explain why. Um, the difference that I make with Rick Warren and guys like uh, Stephen Furtick and stuff like that, uh, for the most part, I mean, there's a, a greater percentage of Rick Warren's stuff that falls in line with biblical Christianity, there's just a couple of things where he has stepped outside of orthodoxy, um, but they're important things. 
I, I, I consider saying that I wouldn't call him a heretic, uh, just a false teacher, but the, the issue in which comes into question with Rick Warren as a, a false teacher is uh, about the person and nature of God. And so he does have a heretical view of who God is if he continues to maintain his belief as he does. And we'll get to that at the end. But I want to just break down a couple of things before we get there. Um, one thing is, is Rick Warren has, uh, a couple of years back, there, and very tragically, um, his son committed suicide, and it was a really big thing, and it, it was just kind of, there's very tense moments there, um, because if you, would, if you were one of us who called him out as a false teacher, well, people came at you, and oh, you're so insensitive, well, I get, and again, I wasn't doing podcasts like this, and I wasn't constantly out there saying Rick Warren needs to repent or anything like that. But what happens is people expect you because of a tragedy to change your stance on what the Bible says to be true. A false teacher is a false teacher in the midst of tragedy or not. It was a horrible thing that that is their son uh, committed suicide. Um, but it was not anything that would make anybody say, um, I'm no longer going to call him a heretic because I don't want to make anybody feel bad. Right. So that was the case. Um, as always, when I do false teacher of the week videos, I like to give you an, uh, a picture of what they say about themselves. So this is from pastor Rick.com and this is the about him, uh, segment. So says that, uh, let's see. Rick Warren uh, is an innovative pastor, renowned author, and global influencer. The various ministries Pastor Rick has created are a multifaceted expression of his art to bring the whole gospel to the whole world. Problem is, if you're bringing the whole gospel of a false presentation of who God is, then it's not the gospel at all. Um, since founding Saddleback Church in 1980, Rick Warren continues to be at the forefront of the evangelical movement, encouraging churches everywhere to be a sanctuary for hope and healing. So some of the, the criticisms that Rick has taken over the years is some people don't think he's got a strong enough stance on like gay marriage and stuff like that. Here's the thing is Rick is, is somebody who Mr. Miyagi would say would get squish just like great. You know, right side of road, okay. Left side of the road, okay. Walk down middle, squish, just like great. That's a horrible Mr. Miyagi impersonation. Uh, probably someone's going to consider it racist and get me uh, kicked off again. Or um, just bad. Just just a bad. I didn't even remember the words right. But Rick Warren is, is a fence sitter. He, he tries to sit on that, that middle ground. So the church doesn't think he's strong enough on stances of what should and should not be biblical. And the world thinks he's too, uh, religious. Right. And so he, he's in that place where he's not pleasing anybody. He, he's not, he, I, I, I don't think he's pleasing God, especially with his presentation of who God is. And He's definitely not pleasing the world, but he is in that seeker sensitive place where he's trying to appeal to the world. And that's what he's trying to do. He's really trying to, he's, he, he is, he's ministering to goats is what I would say. Rick Warren does what Saddleback's whole, uh, ethos is about is, is ministering to, to the goats, um, they want to take those who are outside of the church and make them feel comfortable. And so you get less talk about sin and you get less talk about um, the gospel and you get a lot of self-help. Uh, moral therapeutic deism is, is what they fall into him and the majority of these these false teachers where Rick Warren steps outside of orthodoxy. Um, oh, the one other thing I wanted to mention and see is he was had the held the famous uh, little town hall meetings with. John McCain and Barack Obama, when he asked Barack Obama about, uh, I don't even remember if it was about gay marriage or abortion, but one of those where Barack famously said, it's above my pay grade. Well, you're trying to be the president, which means there's not a whole lot above that pay grade, right? 
So, and Rick Warren kind of let that slide. But here's where we see that Rick Warren steps outside of orthodoxy and where I can stand firmly unless he comes out and repents of this uh, viewpoint um, and say, yes, absolutely, Rick Warren is a false teacher. And that is on the issue of Islam. Now, there was there was a lot of uh, controversy a while back, probably around, I want to say, the the mid to late 2000s, 2005 to 2008, somewhere in there, where people kept saying that that Rick Warren was teaching something called Chrislam, which was a a amalgamation of Christianity and Islam, which was absolutely false. He was not trying to create a new religion. He was not trying to to teach, you know, any kind of intermingling between the two. But what he did do, and he said it many, many times, is that Mormons and or Mormons, <laughs> Mormons and Muslims do probably worship the same God. Oops, sorry. Hey, don't bump the microphone. They probably do worship the same God in the fact that it's a false God and it's a demonic thing. But that he said that Christians and Muslims worship the same God. Well, there are, def- there are uh, absolute, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, contradictory uh, beliefs between Christians and Muslims about who God is, the person and nature of God. Islam would say there is no trinity, there is no triune God. God does, Allah does not have a son. Allah, one of the, the 99 names, the famously uh, known as the 99 names for Allah is the deceiver which our God does not lie. And so there are, there are absolute um, polarizing differences between uh, diametrically opposed. That's the word. That's the phrase I'm looking for. Um, beliefs between Christians and Muslims about God. And until Rick is willing to come out, the same thing that I talked about with Dallas Jenkins. As long as Dallas is going to maintain that Mormons and Christians believe in the same God, he is a false teacher. As long as Rick Warren is going to maintain that Muslims and Christians believe in the same God, he is going to fall into the realm of the false teacher. Because we do not. Our God is not a deceiver. Our God is a triune God. Our God is Father, Son, and Spirit. Our God is the God who says, I sent my son to pay the penalty for your sin. I did everything in this covenant and all that is required of you is to believe. The God of Islam says, the only way you're guaranteed entrance into heaven is if you die in the midst of jihad. So one God is saying, if you want a guaranteed way to heaven, you have to die for me. The true God says, you want a guaranteed way into heaven, repent and believe in my son who died for you. Absolutely, fundamentally different beliefs between who God is, between Islam and Christianity. And until Rick Warren publicly comes out and repents of the multiple times that I have heard him say, Christians and Muslims believe in the same God. He falls into the realm of the false teacher. And that's what's gotten him onto our, uh, our show this week and has become this week's, uh, this episode's false teacher of the week, week number 46. So again, guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope you found it uh, useful and helpful. And again, I'm sorry it's late. I- I've been trying to d- uh, email back and forth with YouTube to find out if I was banned for three four days or if i was just something was goofed up in my system my system did uh um update and so maybe that fixed it maybe that was just it so i'm not gonna i'm not absolutely claiming that i was in youtube jail but it felt like it so um hopefully we will be on track and on schedule with the rest of our podcast this week um otherwise you know we we do what we do Um, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button on YouTube where we've got a bunch of new subscribers. It's been great to see the numbers going up. Um, We'd love to see more people coming and and joining as we uh, explore the world of false doctrines and false teachers and just 
the world in general through a Christian worldview and all the stuff that, that I release on the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube and will continue to do so as long as YouTube and the overlords there uh, graciously allow me to do so. Um, otherwise, if, if I do end up actually getting gone, then you'll probably find me. I'll get more active on Gab TV or on Rumble. So we'll see how that goes. Thank you guys for taking the time to watch. As always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And if you absolutely need to, use amplification. Until next week, Soli Deo Gloria.